Beasley on Coffee with Kenobi. This is the guy they're giving Kenobi to, which sort of tells me that not only are they trying to streamline the story development, I think they're trying to streamline the size of the film. I think this might be the smallest Star Wars movie we get. I don't know why you would get Stephen Daldry otherwise. Smaller than Porks. Sorry, I had to keep the tradition going from last show. <laughs> This is Vanessa Marshall, Harrison Dula from Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hello and welcome to show number 83 of Coffee with Kenobi, your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I'm your host, Dan Z, enjoying a piping hot cup of coffee in my CWK mug featuring the original logo from 2013. It's definitely a classic that takes me back to so many great memories when we started this little show of ours. I want to welcome our new CWK family members, and hello again to each of you. Thank you for joining me once again for a cup of coffee and Star Wars conversation. We hope to make you think about Star Wars in a whole new way, and maybe laugh a little bit in the process. On today's show, we will have plenty of Star Wars discussion and analysis, including a preview of Force Friday 2, an awesome interview with the star of Star Wars Battlefront 2, and the narrator of the Inferno Squad audiobook, Janina Gavankar, CWK newsman Tom Gross will bring us the latest Star Wars news. And in the coffee chat, we will talk with Sophia Meany of Pozu about the incredible selection of Star Wars footwear they have available for purchase. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. A couple of things before we get started. I want to get a special shout out to Lisa Dullard, our CWK media expert all-around awesome Star Wars fan and CWK family member. She does so much for the show. If you get a chance, be sure to tell her thank you on Twitter because she really helps keep the Coffee with Kenobi ship afloat in so many different ways with so many big things that happen in Star Wars universe, and we appreciate you, Lisa. Be sure to get involved with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You've seen that we have an Instagram contest going on with Pozu with those amazing shoes they have. It's helping us get the word out about this incredible product and helping us increase our following on Instagram, which is a a great thing, something we're really excited about. We're going to have a special show later in the week for Force Friday 2, and the co-founder of Coffee with Kenobi, Corey Club, will be joining me, of course, for our third Force Friday event together. Very excited. And CWK newsman Tom Gross will be with us as well, and we're going to be going through different stores, finding different items and Star Wars collectibles from The Last Jedi. Who knows what we're going to find and what's going to happen. Really looking forward to that, so be looking for that very soon on your podcast feed. Be sure to check out the Star Wars Rebels Season 3 Blu-ray. I did a review on www.coffeewithkenobi.com that you can check out in the show notes or on our webpage. But the commentaries on these episodes, there are five of them. Dave Filoni is on a number of them, and he's fantastic, as we know, but listening to him talk about Twin Sons especially is worth the price of the Blu-ray alone. You get to learn a little bit more about who the Chosen One actually is, and after you listen to this, there's not really a debate, in my opinion, because he says what George believes, and they give rationale, and I think it's amazing. Truly a master class. It's how I always envision it would be if you got to sit in the room with Dave Filoni and the story group and listen to them plot out the Star Wars Rebels mythology and what that means for the overall picture of Star Wars. Be sure to let us know what you think about it as well. Joining us today for a cup of coffee is the senior presenter and podcast co-host of Channel Star Wars, Brian Karasik. Hello, folks. Glad to be here. And uh, Dan, thanks for having me on. It's, I've been a long-time listener, first-time participant, and it's going to be a good night. Oh, it's going to be a great night, and I'm so happy to talk with you again. We were just chatting before the show started, and, and Brian and I met uh, in London last year, that amazing experience we got to be a part of, the Gillette uh, took care of us and had us go to Pinewood Studios and Brian and I hit off right away because we obviously love Star Wars and uh, both have families who are sometimes Star Wars widows and uh, we just (laughs) just had a great time chatting so it's really nice to uh, have you on and, and chat. Absolutely thanks again for having me. You bet. Our other guest joining us today is a longtime listener someone I finally got to meet at Celebration Orlando I've just been a big fan of just he's a good guy great Star Wars fan, and he's also the co-host of the Bad Motivators podcast, Eric Struthers. Thanks so much for having me on, Dan. And it was excellent to meet you at Celebration. 
It was. We we chatted after the, the the Star Wars writers panel that I did, and it was cool, man. It was it was brief, but it was awesome, and I knew I had to have you on the show. And this is an interesting week for Star Wars because obviously, a lot's going to happen. We've got Force Friday two just around the corner. Did you notice the press release today, guys? Uh, the augmented reality thing that they're doing uh, all over the world. Yes. Yeah. The video I saw was Star Destroyers circling around the London Eye. Yes, I know. Close to close to my heart because, as you mentioned, Dan, when we met in Pinewood, that was one of the places that Gillette took us on a, a little uh, private and catered ride around the London Eye. So about 45 minutes spinning around on a giant Ferris wheel and, and seeing that same location with Star Destroyers in orbit. Ah, oh, got to love it. It was great. That was also, by the way, the one thing I skipped because I don't like heights. I went and saw the... Um, the the palace that was pretty cool too oh that's right <laughs> uh, well i i'm not a not too bad on the heights but I, it's unfortunate that you missed that i, I forgot we had such a, a packed crowd in there so yeah also the catering gotta gotta give a nice shout out to gillette for the champagne on uh you know mile up or however high we were it was really fun it was really fun this thing that they've done looks really really fun too and they've got a number of places uh, it's literally global the things that they're doing and how it works, for those of uh, us who have not yet caught the press release, is you download the Star Wars app. It's, it's, this is a great commercial for the Star Wars app. They're going to get so many more downloads for their app. But they, you take your phone and open the app to the augmented reality option, and you go to different landmarks throughout the world. It even gives you the direct geographic coordinates on the press release, and you will get to see your favorite landmarks, famous global landmarks, with the Star Destroyer over it and TIE Fighters. Uh, in the U.S., there's there are quite a few, but not as many as I expected. You've got Central Park, uh, the Grand Canyon, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Hollywood sign. I think I've hit them all. So, gentlemen, what do you think about this? Are, you, are either of you close enough that you could catch these? No, unfortunately, I'm not close enough to any of those things. Nor am, Nor am I. I was just up in New York City. I believe you, you mentioned one of the landmarks up there. I just got back last night. Uh, Daniel and I were up there with Channel Star Wars covering a, a, another product launch that I'm not at liberty to discuss right now. But stay tuned to ChannelStarWars.com. Tomorrow morning, 11.01, we'll be able to share that. But at any rate, I won't be able to to get out there. We have a fairly uh, fairly lackluster crowd, actually, in my local town. I, I go to a Toys R Us in, uh, in Durham, North Carolina, and last year I was out there for Force Friday, and there were all 15 people there. I was the only one in costume. It was I was a little disappointed, but, you know, that's what can you do. It, it, it can be celebration every day. Well, it's got it's true. It's true. But that's all right. We've got so many opportunities. This is going to be uh, Niagara Falls are going to have it, the Sydney Harbor Bridge in Australia. It's... It's really staggering, the Eiffel Tower. I'm not sure how this was coordinated, but it really is uh, quite a coup for marketing as much as anything else in technology. We've come a really long way. And as far as the history of Force Friday, this is the third one. Last year was Rogue Friday, and that will always have a special place in my heart because of, because of reasons like Target commercials and things like that. Uh, sure. No, no commercial this year for me, but that's quite a ride <laughs> because I get to run to these stores all over the local area that I'm in. We're in the central Illinois area, of course. And there's a number of stores involved in a lot of exclusive offerings. Uh, guys, what do you think about what's going on tomorrow? You know, I have to say, Dan, Eric, the uh, the way that Disney has taken this in hand is, is unbelievable. And I, I really want to speak to that for a moment because – I remember when Star Wars A New Hope came out, and if you wanted to know everything about that movie, you watched the movie. And if you wanted to get maybe a little bit of extra background detail, you maybe bought the novel and maybe subscribed to the magazine. But that was pretty much it. But starting with Force Awakens, Disney, you know, they're not new to this, of course, and they know what they have on their hands. And I think they're treating it like the like the gem that it is. Just for an example – the Force Awakens. If you want to know the name of the old man that Kylo Ren kills in the opening scene, you got to read the book. They never say his name in the movie. If you want to know what the deal is with the Church of the Force, that's in the Visual Dictionary. If you're interested in Kylo Ren's lightsaber, also in the Visual Dictionary. And it just they've really taken it to the next level of if you want to know everything about this property, you're gonna you you might need to buy a video game or two, subscribe to a comic book, and just there's. 
so many source books out there. There's listen just Star Wars podcasts. I can recommend three listen right to. <laughs> Yeah, likewise. <laughs> and and I, you know, I don't know how you feel about the Disney buyout. I'm going to assume that we're all kind of on board by now. But every day on on the internet, I see people complain about, oh, Disney ruined it, and you know, now it's just for kids. It's always been for kids. That's right. The George the, said it's uh, for twelve year olds. He he was very clear about that. Yes, very nice. And uh, uh, that sort of br- a bit of a different topic. But the, when the Forces of Destiny videos came out. I saw so many scathing reviews of it, like this is stupid, and the animation is dumb, and the storylines are, are trite. I'm like, you're a grown man; it's not for you. Exactly. I'm, I'm glad that the cartoon made for eight year old girls is not appealing to you. Like, I, I would be a little concerned if it were. See, uh, rewind a little bit. You asked about the Disney merger. Uh, you know, when uh, Jerry Maguire, when he's when she says you had me at hello, that's, <laughs> that's how I was with the Disney thing. They've, they've you had me at hello, but, folks. But wonderful when it came to Star Wars. I mean, we've got way more stars than we ever have. The quality is at a consistently high level, and there's so much to look forward to. The the merchandise, uh, the books, like you said, the comics, just everything. It just it's just been wonderful. I'm really excited about this. You, I mean, the Disney stores around the co- the country, especially the big ones like Times Square and Chicago's Michigan Avenue, San Francisco. They're giving away a mini poster. They're having Ways of the Force activities. They're having a Star Wars story time, Art of R2-D2, all kinds of theming. Walmart's having a thing where, they're Jedi, where you can be Jedi ready, and they're having events in the parking lots. Uh, Six-foot-tall model Luke Skywalker from The Force Awakens made out of Lego. Toys R Us is having a lot of cool stuff, giving away posters and T-shirts. Uh, it's a Funko Pop T-shirt, which they did last year for Rogue One. Love that uh, shirt. Basically, everywhere online has stuff. Kohl's is going to have stuff. Meyer. It just the list goes on and on. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. What are the two of you going to do for Force Friday 2? Well, this year, about? last year, I didn't do any midnight openings. The buzz for Rogue One, I think, was pretty high among like a select few of my nerd friends, but past that, I didn't see people, you know, clamoring for the toys the way you're never going to have another force awakens force Friday. I just don't, I don't think that's ever going to top that. They're never going to leave 10, 10 years between movies again. Well, exactly. That's exactly it. So, you know, when people are like, Oh, the, the wave is over. It's like, no, it's not really. You're just, you're comparing apples to oranges, but this year I'm going to hit, None of the targets immediately next to my town are going to open at midnight, but uh, one near one of the church campuses. I'm the music director of my church, so, so one of the places I work, that one is opening at 12.01. So I'm going to hit that, see how that works out, hit a Walmart that's 24 hours on my way home from there, and then get the kids up for school on Friday morning and hit the target in town to see see what's left. That's the plan. That's a good plan. I like that plan. And I like what you said about the Force Awakens Force Friday. That was just so special. It was the first one. And yes, it's been it had been 10 years between movies, but even more than that, it had been 32 years since we got a Star Wars film that had Harrison Ford in it and Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher. And I think that accentuated things to a whole other level. That's true. Oddly enough, I, I don't know if it's oddly enough, but I'm more excited for this than I was for Rogue Friday last year. I, I guess just because the continuation of the Star Wars saga is so exciting. Brian, where are you going to go tomorrow? Well, as I mentioned, there's a Toys R Us in, in my local area that does a midnight showing. No no other stores do uh, do anything at the midnight, just this one Toys R Us. And there, as I said, there's about 15 people there. I'm probably not going to do a costume this year. I mean, it's an hour and a half of, of makeup, and I just I don't know if I can muster it up to go to go be the only one in costume. But I'll bring my lightsaber. We have some sparring in the in the uh, parking lot. Honestly, uh, there's not a toy I'm looking for. There's not a character I'm particularly invested in. It's all it's all good. It's all Star Wars. But you know, um, you mentioned that uh, I don't know for Rogue One. It, it was there wasn't quite as much buzz in my mind for it because let's be honest, we knew how Rogue One was going to end. I mean, spoiler alert, guys. They they get the plans. So <laughs> I, I do think that with the they Last were Jedi and show I'm, careful. <laughs> with the last Jedi though, we don't know where this story is going to go. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more engaged and 
the it's gonna have I Luke. mean it's gonna have Luke yes Skywalker. Luke gets to say a word I'm on board exactly now we're gonna be going to Toys R Us so I I wanted to go to Target quite honestly because I just had so much fun there two years ago and no targets in my area are going to have anything which I just find so puzzling and I'm not sure how that is there are a number of targets across the country obviously. And you go to Target.com slash Star Wars, and they tell you which shows are going to have these. I feel like it would be quite the moneymaker, but maybe they leave it up to the individual stores. I'm not really quite sure how that is all figured out. But, in Brian, you mentioned some things that you're looking for, and really just sort of there just for the atmosphere and environment, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a social event. It, the the shopping, totally. even, even last year when I was – I mean, I, I – those those of my channel Star Wars fans who've come over to listen here will know this, but I'm a Palpatine guy. Have been ever since Empire of the Strikes Back came out. That's what I collect. I have 23 Palpatine figures, a 3D crystal, uh, 3D crystal etched block with Palpatine in it, the UK postage stamp with Palpatine. Like I, I kind of I'm kind of overboard with it, and I was hoping there might be something with him because he's actually alive in the events of Rogue One and not so much in Last Jedi. So I'm not too much targeted. I will say my co-host on the Channel Star Wars Star Wars Hour podcast is uh, he is going to be we're hoping when he's going to make it up there. We were invited to participate in the Disney Store Times Square Force Friday. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to head up there and actually have some footage out there. But otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, checking in with folks on the street. And what are you looking to do? And I I like hearing from people what they think is going to happen in Last Jedi. You know, what are they looking for? What do they hope? What are their crazy theories? That's what I like hearing. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get some good conversation out there. I made some good friends I'm still in touch with last year. So this year promises to be more of the same. Eric, what will you be on the hunt for? Um, the mechanized Porg is a big one. And I said I was going to get two, one for my kids and one for me. But if it's expensive, I'll get one for me and they can admire it, you know, <laughs> from afar, I guess. I really want to get the uh, six inch black series, Luke and Ray. And if I'm lucky, a Thrawn. But that Luke figure, man, I really want that. It looks great. It looks phenomenal. They, do you, Eric, do you, you know if there's if there's a new sculpt on the the Ray and the Poe and the Finn, or are these uh, just basically recycled from the last line? It looks a little different. I haven't seen any clear images of it, but I think it, uh, Ray looks a little bit, uh, I don't know, more haggard. Her clothes are different. Uh, the face does look a little bit different. Does she still know? have two hands? Yes. Yes, That's she does. Key. That's a key character to plot development in any <laughs> Jedi. Indeed it is. I I saw the um, Kylo Ren's tie last week at Walmart, and I thought, ooh, and I, of course, I had to admire it because it wasn't supposed to be out yet. I mean, how much are they paid to, you know, enforce Lucasfilm's laws? Yeah, Surely. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually had an instance this past week where I was in a Walmart and found – I'm not a big three-and-three-quarter-inch figure guy, but there's a two-pack of a Ray and a Praetorian Guard. And I thought, hey, it's early. Let's see if I can get away with this. And the answer was no. In their POS system, the item is referred to as restricted when you scan it, right. and there's nothing you can do. So – but lots of those stores, I've been. A lot of my friends have told me that they've seen things out that they've, you know, all done the same thing. Try to buy. Uh, it and I, I have to wonder how much of that is actually intentional. Let me ask you guys this: sure. Has among like the much more casual fan than we all tend to be in our immediate circle? To me, it doesn't seem like there's as much hype about Force Friday among the, I, I hate, I don't mean the term in a derogatory fashion, but among the casuals, if you will, or especially Absolutely. the people who just have a, a random passing. This, it seems like nobody's talking about it except us. I, I agree with that, but I also felt the same way about The Force Awakens. <laughs> and there's just so much excitement it just in my house about it that that seems to be sort of like, I always think, oh, everybody must feel that way. But you do bring up a good point, Eric. That may not necessarily be the case. I know for me last time, the things I got the biggest kick out of, besides the three and three quarter inch figures, which definitely are, are my favorites, is seeing Star Wars Creamer. Like I saw Boba Fett Creamer and R two D two Creamer, and I thought this is so cool. So I I got them all, and I still have them. They're in my Star Wars office right now, rinsed out, of course. Uh, like they had Star Wars bottled water, like little things like that. They're actually consumable that you can enjoy, or that you just did have anybody else get a bag and of still show your fandom and and just. 
you know, through normal everyday things. I just get a huge kick out of that. I got a bag of BB-8 oranges. That's awesome. Did you? Oh, that them? is cool. Uh, yeah, I did. I ate them. They're not. I mean, you can't That's collect smart. oranges. They they will just go bad sooner or later. Yeah, Steve Sansweet told us that when he gets the food stuff, he keeps the packages and obviously consumes the food, but he keeps the the packaging. You know, I gotta I gotta touch on that. I was super disappointed with the Force Awakens cereal because oh, really? it's it's a your sort of your standard Marshmallow Bits affiliated cereal, right? I got the the Kylo Ren box and. They just got it all wrong. It's corn-based cereal. I don't think corn-based cereal goes well with marshmallow bits. It's essentially kicks with, um, I don't know, Lucky Charms reject this marshmallows. This became a, a Star Wars gourmet cereal podcast. How I, exciting. I, this Dan, is definitely Dan, I, a, a niche. I take my cereal seriously, and, and it, it's just – it was offensive to me because not only was the cereal kind of lackluster – it's made by General Mills. You guys make Lucky Charms, the gold standard of marshmallow cereals. Do it right. You could have done it so much better. It's all right, though. I won't hold it I, against them. I did eat the whole box. I have yeah. a box of that sitting on my shelf, and I never opened it. I should – now I'm not going to, knowing, knowing all this. I'm, I'm devastated. You're I'm better off. With you. Okay. Well, my son and I bought the, the Kylo Ren one and the BB-8 one, and we ate them in like two days, and I thought they were awesome. <laughs> well, maybe I just got a bad batch. I don't know. It was an Albuquerque Target. Who knows? I saw an interesting toy pack. Just be, I don't think it was on the shelf early. I did not try to buy it. But there's um, the I really enjoy looking at the lightsaber blade builder sets. You know what I'm talking about? The, it's oh, yeah. uh, interconnecting pieces. I was very tempted. All right, we actually have our first child is due in, in January. I'm like, hey, maybe oh, it's time to start buying our lightsaber. Thanks. That's uh, that's awesome. And we're we're yeah. quite excited. We've already uh, we've already nixed the idea of naming her Leia, Padme, Ayla. I, I tried a few kind of deep cuts, but even Mara didn't fly, so we're just going to go with naming her after grandmothers. Well, that, that's, <laughs> I think that's a good move. I think that's a good move. So we're going to go ahead and take our first break, and up next we're going to chat with Janina Kavankar of Star Wars Battlefront Two. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Oh, pasta cream, would you? Coffee with Kenobi is sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Thrawn and Empire's End Aftermath to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll plan to keep you entertained. Visit penguinrandomhouseaudio.com slash Star Wars for sample clips and to start listening now. Coffee with Kenobi is also sponsored by the Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops. If you love Star Wars and love the excitement of chasing your favorite Star Wars collectibles, the Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops is for you. Download the free app from iTunes or Google Play and collect your favorite images from the classic 1977 Star Wars cards to the Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, The Force Awakens, Rogue One, and much more. Collect and trade with friends new and old through the Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops. These are the cards you're looking for. If you're considering a way that you want to help out Coffee with Kenobi, an excellent way to do so is to be a member of our CWK Patreon page. We have so many people who help contribute to the show each and every month, and I'm talking about CWK family members like Tyler Wiggins, Jason Hall, Dennis Keithley, Aaron Harris, Angela Saus, Mediocre Jedi, Chris Hatting, Terry Lee, Jim Capron, Connie Shee, Mike Audette, Adam Leonard, Suara Sala, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. It's an amazing way to help us out with our show expenses, including the RSS feed. You can help us host our webpage, the microphone upkeep, cables, the travel, and everything that goes into that. And then we have a number of incentives, including some brand new incentives that I'm really excited to talk about. With a $5 contribution, you get recognition at the start of each show, like you just heard, and you get a follow from us on Twitter. $10 $10 and up, we have access to our Google Hangout, which is a monthly opportunity. At 35 or more is a coffee mug, all the way up to T-shirts, et cetera, depending on how much you want to contribute. And if you get contribute $50 or more, you could host one show with me, two shows with me in a month, or an entire month of shows. That's four shows, depending on how much you were able to contribute for that particular time. Now, the news, the big news is we are now a member of Discord. Discord is an app. It's also something you can use on your computer. It's something that gamers use, but it's now something that 
others can use as well. And Coffee with Kenobi has a Discord account, and it's really, really cool. Basically, it's almost like message boards just for CWK family members. So you can get on there and discuss anything that comes to mind. Right now, we have a Discord one for general. We're just talking Star Wars in the podcast. We have one for Star Wars Rebels because the DVD for Season 3 is coming out soon. And Season 4 should be announced really, really soon as far as when that starts. And then we've got one for Star Wars Collecting, which seems really appropriate for Forge Friday. Now, if you... And that is something you get for $5 or more a month. So if you contribute 5 bucks to Coffee with Kenobi Monthly, you immediately get access to our Discord page. And I've just really been getting into it. At first, there was a learning curve for me. And now I've got it, I think, down. I've added the app to my phone, so it's easier to communicate that way. And I've had an absolute blast with it. I can't wait to see everyone else get more involved in the conversation and to involve even more people to the conversation as well. Now, if you contribute $35 or more a month, not only do you have access, but you also are able to create your own Discord conversation threads where you can start a conversation of your own and we can all join in with you. So $5 or more a month, you automatically get to be a member of the Discord Coffee with Kenobi page, and that goes all the way up. And then if you contribute 35 or more, not only are you a member, but you can create your own channels for us to have a conversation with. So you're, if you are interested in that, please check out the link in our show notes or on our webpage at the top left for more information. Nina Gavankar plays the role of Aiden Versi on the upcoming Star Wars Battlefront 2. Janina, thank you for having a cup of coffee with us today. Well, thank you. This is a very taste, a tasteful cup of coffee. Well, I'm glad that it is to your liking, the right amount of cream and sugar, of course. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show. And fans, I believe, saw your passion and enthusiasm for Star Wars at E3, as well as on the Star Wars show. And it was really awesome. So tell us, <laughs> if you would, about your history with Star Wars and what does it mean to become a significant part of this franchise? <laughs> Um, I, uh, I watched Star Wars for the first time pretty late. I watched it in, uh, my freshman year of high school. I had a pretty strict upbringing, so I wasn't allowed to watch a ton of television. I certainly wasn't allowed to play video games. And, um, I had a lot of pop culture holes and I still do strangely, but I mean, Star Wars is not one of them. You know, like when I watched it, when I was a freshman, it was like, Oh, I understand now. (laughs) And I and I um, I'm I'm so thankful to my best friend at the time who who sat me down and was like almost dumped me as a friend <laughs> until I had watched um, all three. It was pretty important. I love that. Yeah. And I, I mean, people have always said that Star Wars uh, brings people together. It certainly brings up interesting conversation, and I have found it interesting. And I'm sure you've told the story many times, but. I really loved hearing you describe how you got the role of Iden Versio. Would you mind sharing it with the coffee with Kenobi family? Oh my gosh. In some ways I feel as though I coerced everyone into giving it to me. Um, I knew what this game was before anyone told me. So when you audition for a video game, things are very top secret. Uh, mostly you have no idea what it is. You, you're very lucky to even find out what the studio is that you might be auditioning for. I was lucky enough to figure that out. And because I read NeoGAF forums, which is, uh, basically, um, a, a pretty deep dive, uh, kind of, um, you know, like forum for, for, for gamers sure. and, and uh, game developers. And, you know, it's like if, if Reddit on, was on crack and only talked about the games industry, that's like what Neo <laughs> is. Excellent description. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, I read it pretty seriously and, and have for a long time. And so I knew that this game was battlefront two, Um, and, uh, immediately was like, you know, suddenly all the stakes were in play and and it became, it felt like life or death. I mean, it was just the biggest deal to me. I was telling all of my representatives, like, you don't understand. This means the world to me. If I don't get this, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I won't be able to look in the mirror. I won't be able to live. I won't be able to, you know, it was just, it became such a big deal and it still is, you know, I can't believe that I get to be a part of this galaxy. I can't believe that it, um, this character has had such a warm reception, even though she's an Imperial. And, you know, I've been a nerd for my entire life. 
I, I kind of came out this way. And I feel like, um, I feel like suddenly people are noticing, you know, um, sure. and that, that all happened when EA allowed me to present the game at the EA play conference. And it was sort of like a coming out party. It was sort of like a, this quinceanera or something. It was like, everybody suddenly went, Oh, you're like us. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And, um, in, in some ways my life changed, you know, I felt like, and, and there's so many nerves that go into, to doing something like that. The whole world is watching and it's star Wars. You just want it to go perfectly. And I was so nervous and gripping every word so tightly with my mouth. Like if you watch it, you can see me like over enunciating and, and it was like trying to slow down time because I just wanted it. To, I wanted to represent this wonderful thing as best I could. And, um, you know, being allowed to be a part of the star Wars family has kind of been like a big warm hug. <laughs> and, that's great. And, and unexpectedly. So, you know, sure. And, and I, I mean, I, I know I've been to Lucasfilm a few times. I know how amazing it is. Can you describe what that was like for you to walk through those halls? Oh, my goodness. Well, so the first time I got to go, um, I was doing a movie in Oakland. So I, I took a, a trip over there and it was to be able to talk to the publishing group. And um, they're the ones that gave me my little tour and showed me around and um you know, I got to see when you walk through those halls, you're looking at a lot of the props and the practical effects that are used in a lot of the uh, ILM movies and uh, the history is just around you. And it's, 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 uh, it, it really does feel as special as it is. And everybody who works there knows that they're lucky to be in the building at all. Right, and, and uh, being on the Star Wars show was great. Andy, of course, is so fun and so welcome. Andy I love is the, the chemistry best. you two had, too. Oh, my gosh. We have too much chemistry because, you know, we ran around <laughs> D23 and um, we had a camera on us, but we were so silly and we were so outlandish that, like, none of the stuff we shot can be used. So it was like, <laughs> it was like a total waste. We were just like, we just like, you know, palled around and were, were um, ridiculous together for an hour. And we were supposed to be shooting something that would air. We didn't really know what. And uh, no one will ever see it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Well, well you, you mentioned um, how you felt on stage. And, of course, you're your own strong person in your own right. But there are a lot of mirrors uh, to your character that you play in Star Wars Battlefront 2. And the fact that you are the voice uh, for the audiobook of Battlefront 2 yes. Inferno Squad by Christy Golden is such a, an incredible thing, such great synergy in the company. So let's look at Truly. that book a little closely. This is Christy Truly. Golden's second foray into Star Wars for literature. Mm -hmm. Now, you're a fan and you're a professional. So to you, how does Christy breathe life into your character? And how does that affect your performance when you're doing the audiobook? Because oh, I think it's fair to say God. that you two know this character better than anyone ever will. Thank you. Um, I found out that there was a book because I had my ear to the ground like a super creeper when I first started working on the game. And uh, I found Christie's information and I was ready to call her even if nobody introduced me to her on their own. So I sort of warned everybody that was working on the game and um, in our Lucasfilm story group person who's Steve Blank and was like, so I know there's a book and I know Christy exists and I know I have, I now have all of her contact information. So did you want me to call her myself or do you guys want to set that up? And he was like, Oh, my gosh. Well, let's start that conversation soon. So I was very uh, lucky to talk to her. I think it was my, my first or second day prepping, um, the physical motion capture. So we sat down and had a power hour over Skype and she told me the entire backstory of Iden and Inferno squad and everything that was going wow. on in the book. So I was able to carry that 
with me in my performance for the game and um, make it as seamless as possible. And um, so then we did all the motion capture of the game and I was in constant conversation with Christy. Um, We exchanged phone numbers and emails immediately that day and I had questions for her and I would send her photos and, and I would tell all the rest of the cast members all the things I knew so we could carry it with us. And then suddenly it, um, I was asked to voice the audiobook, which I have never done before. I have never voiced an audiobook. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was so hard. <laughs> I can totally appreciate that. Absolutely. It's it, that. So for an audiobook, I've done a lot of voiceover before, but for an audiobook, you hit go and you do not stop. And because we had crunch time, because my schedule was so screwed up because of what I had to do for the game, I couldn't be in two places at once. So I had to do the the book in four eight hour sessions um, wow. with a pickup wow. day. Now, like eight hours doesn't seem like a lot of work. Everybody who's listening is like, yeah, girl, I do that every day. But when um, for an audio book, that's actually quite a long session. And I didn't know that. So I was lucky in a way because it was my first one. I was like, I don't know any better. If we just keep going, we keep going. And then I'm a dead person for the rest of the the day until we have to do it again tomorrow. But it, um, it was, it was, uh, it was incredible. And I was warned by a friend of mine that doing an audio book is he, he described it as pushing a boulder up a mountain with your face. (laughs) Sisyphus would even say, Ooh, that's hard. Yes, exactly. And so I was ready for it to be hard and, and boy, it was, and, um, I was really worried about the reception because, you know, obviously I care so much, but it's been quite positive so far. And, uh, I mean, listen, the, I, everybody who's listening, if you have gotten the book already, I thank you so much because you're one of the reasons that it's charted. It's an, it's on the, it's number thir- currently number 13 on the New York Times bestseller list. The audiobook is charting at number 4 on iTunes and Audible. It's like it's amazing. It's amazing. I I'm so happy that people are getting it and listening to it, especially if they're a gamer and they're planning on getting the the game. Like you better be listening to this book because sure. it tells you so much about who these characters are. Who and it's emotional and you know we don't get to see the imperial perspective often mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, from this at this level, right? So we see, we know who these people are. We've now seen underneath these buckets, um, but there, these well, are there's, there's tense. There's some incredibly tense emotional scenes where she sort of has these internal conflicts and the way she resolves them and how she rationalizes them. Oh Especially yeah, the last fifty. Yeah, pages. I and mean, that, that would take hours alone because there's so much emotion you have to pour into this. Oh yeah. And that's not hard by the way. You know, these things I've been living with these ideas since I was cast in October. And, um, I think Christy and I started discussing in February, maybe January. So, um, I've known a lot of the really emotional beats for a long time. And, um, by the time I was actually reading it, and you can hear it in my voice. I had to stop a few times, oh, yeah. you know, I had to stop a few times because I just would get so choked up that I had to stop to make my voice work. <laughs> um, the performance you know, is fantastic, by the way. I mean, it's oh, tremendous. It really adds so much. Thanks. I mean, I, it was, it was in some ways it's really easy to conjure I'm not even conjuring it. It's just, you know, I'm walking around, I'm still working on this game. I'll probably be doing, um, in-game voiceover work until it ships. And I'm walking around with these, with this life on my skin every day. I think about it every day. And I am so lucky to be able to engage with the Star Wars community every day. And it means so much that it's not, it's not hard to put myself in her shoes and in those boots. Mm-hmm. Well, it comes through. I- <laughs> Thank you. But it's very easy when like, when, you know, Christy wrote one hell of a book and yes. she's been so kind and being so, so available. There's not one question she hasn't answered immediately for me and in detail. And, um, 
we've been lucky enough to see each other along the way. Like I got to see her at uh, Comic Con. We did a signing together, which felt weird for me because I was like, I did not write this book. I should not be writing my name in this book. <laughs> like, you know, like there's like a there's the special edition that came out um, just for Comic Con, and it has this space for her to write her name. And I was like, I don't know, this doesn't feel right. You know, like all I did was show up and, and voice your words, but um, we, you know, we've had a really wonderful time together and we've gotten to sort of hold hands along the way in, in releasing the story. And uh, I'm, uh, people love it because she, she wrote one hell of a story. Well, she's, I think Iden's really unique to star Wars because she's, she's an anti-hero, which brings up its own unique set of challenges. I disagree. (laughs) I'm glad. See, the English teacher me is very happy right now. Discussions (laughs) is the heart of everything. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not, um, Nobody's an anti-hero to themselves, you true, know. True. So, and this is she was she grew up in in um she grew up being ready to be an imperial officer. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, but she's also made up of two very different parents, and that's what I love the most about her. Yes. Her father, her father is an admiral. He's a big big deal, obviously. Um, he's very fancy. But her mother is also fancy, but as an artist. And, you know, if you read this book and you listen to this book, you'll hear that there are two sides to this person. She is both a very focused, military-minded individual who loves her uniform and loves her cockpit. And also she has a really big heart that is conflicted and analytical, Mm -hmm. you know, and is like constantly thinking about the things around her. Um, even though she doesn't question what she has to do to make the world and galaxy better. Right. She, she has these, these wonderful moments, uh, throughout the novel where she has to weigh her duty and, and then the, the climax of this book and, and how she plays it and it's just it's just an incredibly wonderful. I mean, Christy Golden. Totally, Hats off to Christy. Yes, she understands character so well in the. And I love how the book ends. I could go on and on, but I know your coffee <laughs> is running low. And without oh giving any gosh. without giving any way, because we're a spoiler free podcast. How does the novel enhance the upcoming Battlefront too? Oh, it, it enhances it tenfold. Um, you know, you're you're picking up. You if you haven't seen the trailer to the game, I urge you to watch it. Um, you're picking up on Endor right when the second Death Star explodes. That is not a spoiler. That is in all of the trailers. Right. Um, this is a very well oiled machine of a squad. They're at the top of their game, and it's almost like nobody knows they exist because they come in and they clean things up and they get out of there before anyone notices. And um, they haven't been a squad for 20 years. They're relatively young. And you'll want to know what it's like at the dawn of their creation. This book does all of that. Also, if you look at the cover of the book, there's four Infernal Squad members. And if you look at the if you look at anything that is coming out about the game, there are three Inferno Squad members. You're gonna want to know who that fourth squad oh, member was. Wow. And wow what that person's what that person did to them to make them who they are you know these kinds of things are important and it's not like some random thing that happened like this is embedded in who they are as people as you go through this game i read all the books and the video games i love and appreciate i've already pre-ordered battlefront 2 strictly because of christie's (laughs) novel i want to see what happens to the to the rest of inferno squad and yeah. You, did, you gave a nice little tease there. That was excellent. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, that, that really does cement them. It adds pathos. It adds real gravitas to these characters. And again, we really appreciate you coming on Coffee with Kenobi and having a cup with us. Of course. Thank you for serving this coffee to me. So warm and tasty. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and if you'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to have you back on after the game comes out and we know a little bit sure. more about the character. The wonderful. Sure. So where can people reach out if they want to ask you a question or just say hello? Oh, please do. Please do reach out. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the book. Um, and if you do have questions, just tweet them at me at Janina at J A N I N A. And also on Instagram at Janina. 
And it's my full name on Facebook, um, J-A-N-I-N-A-G-A-V-A-N-K-A-R. That one's hard to find because I have so many letters in my name. But I'm also sort of like, if you really care, you'll Google. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's how I am. I'm like, nah, I'll figure it out. I'll Google it. Janina Gavankar, ladies and gentlemen. After the break, Tom has news. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects, top-notch narrators, and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From Han Solo to C-3PO to Admiral Ackbar, you'll recognize all of your favorite characters. Listen to movie tie-ins like Rogue One and The Force Awakens, to book titles such as Thrawn and Empire's End Aftermath, to classic audiobooks like William Shakespeare's Star Wars. With Star Wars audiobooks, you'll have plenty of Star Wars listening to keep you entertained. Visit PenguinRandomHouseAudio.com for forward slash Star Wars for sample clips and to start listening now. The Star Wars Digital Card Trader collecting app features incredible images from many aspects of the saga, including the original trilogy, the prequels, the Clone Wars, Rebels, The Force Awakens, and Rogue One. It's the quality you have come to expect from Tops. It's also easy to get into and really fun too. Your favorite Star Wars characters, scenes, and moments are in every pack. To get started, download the app for free from iTunes or Google Play, and then be sure to open the app each day for free credits to spend on card packs from the cantina. Plus, if you can't get what you're looking for, there's a place to trade with your friends as you complete your Star Wars collection. And if you're an experienced collector, there are exclusive cards, special inserts, and autograph opportunities for you to enjoy. Don't worry about missing the cards and sets you want either, as you can sign up for notifications right on the app. The Star Wars Digital Card Trader collecting app from Tops can be downloaded for free from iTunes or Google Play. Be sure to download the app and start your collection today. The Star Wars Digital Card Trader collecting app from Tops is available now. And remember, these are the cards you're looking for. back and of course tom gross joins us for news tom what's going on in the world of star wars well with the release of rebels season three on dvd and blu-ray uh by the way ray on my script here spelled r-e-y uh and the new season four on the horizon dan brooks of starwars.com sat down with executive producer dave filoni to talk about the season three biggest moments When asked about the seeming step away from the story of the Jedi and the focus on the rebellion, Filoni's response was, Thrawn was the bad guy. They wanted to bring in an element of the rebels by introducing Mon Mothma and Saw Gerrera. And besides besides Ezra's search for power outside of himself rather than looking inward, Filoni says you can't go much into the Force and mysticism without undermining it too much. You have to be very careful, said Filoni. He previews, though, that season four will delve deeper because, quote, I think you're ready for it. Ezra commits to what he feels he needs to do. Brooks moves on to ask about writing the finale between Hera and Thrawn, and Filoni says that it was an intentional matchup because Hera has never really had an adversary in the military sense. She was like the matriarch, saying, don't mess with my family, and here is this cold, calculating mind to oppose that. The final matchup shows her skills as commander and leader, but the rebels barely get away, so Thrawn still comes away as the strategic genius. This is just a taste of the conversation, as Filoni also discusses the tragedy of Maul, Rex and the Clone Wars, Sabine and the Dark Saber, and more, all found on StarWars.com. The, the Blu-ray, I mentioned this at the top of the show, but the Blu-ray commentaries for this are outstanding. There's a great little bit that Dave talks about on the Twin Sons commentary, where he mentions how is Ezra able to be found by Darth Maul, and what kind of like what does it mean to have a Jedi radar? And he pretty much says that that doesn't make any sense. And just the way he explains it, by the way, a thousand times better than I'm explaining it right now, uh, is really really engaging. It's like that master class where you're just sitting there listening to Filoni wax poetic about the Force. And he, of course, he knows George so well. I mean, they text, they have conversations. He's heard George talk about the Force probably as much or more than maybe anyone has. And it's great. I I cannot recommend the Blu-ray highly enough. 
I was most moved by the fight between Maul and Kenobi. And, and let me say, finally, good job, Kenobi. You learned to cut lengthwise rather than across the grain because that's really how you get a good. <laughs> but the, that moment, I I was I heard my my some colleagues of mine were a little disappointed in because it seemed like such a short fight. But it was it was such a perfect callback to the you know old. Um, samurai films you know yeah it was it was straight out of kurosawa you know two ancient samurai face each other and, and you know the battles won before a the lot you, you got to hear it. if you haven't heard it yet brian you've got it i haven't it. it's, oh you have no i have not I oh it's got to you will love it it is it's, yeah i was a great. little i was a little slow to get into rebels it's not exactly aimed right at me but by the time i was three episodes into the first season i was i was sold and i have to say I was not a fan of Ahsoka Tano. When she was first introduced in Clone Wars, she shows up in the middle of a battle. Nobody's expecting her. Like, I don't think getting your first Jedi Padawan should be like getting the phone book in the mail. You're like, oh, you, know, you don't need this. You weren't expecting it. Now what do you do with it? But I also thought she was a little fan servicey at first. You know, she's an underage girl in a bare midriff top, and her name is a Japanese phrase, and she's got gigantic eyes. Like, I feel like we're kind of a little on the nose with this, guys. But... Again, by second second season of Clone Wars, I'm on board, and she's my some of my favorite moments in Rebels have been dealing with Ahsoka. And then the novel came out. Big fan, big fan. You know, I, I have to say, I've never been so compelled to need to buy a Blu-ray machine and a Blu-ray before in my life. But Dan, you are making a hard sell on this because I do not believe that commentary is on the DVD. Do you guys know it's for not, sure? It's only on the Blu-ray. That's what I thought. There's, That's how they get you. I'm feeling the same way. Them. And they, I, I don't. In the uh, there's a, there's a couple of behind the scenes documentaries. Most of them are like six minutes, fifty eight seconds. I know that because I was writing them down when I was doing the review. But the Obi Wan Darth Maul one's uh, just under eight minutes, and it's fantastic too. Just and seeing the designs of these characters and what went into them, it's it's really great. What else we got going on? Well, new episodes of Lucasfilm's popular Forces of Destiny animated micro-series will be coming out this fall. An article from the newest issue of Star Wars Insider magazine takes a look at the design and creation of Forces of Destiny. Lucasfilm story group member Carrie Beck uh, reports that Han Solo and Finn will be making appearances. Jedi News reports that Beck does not say who will be providing the voice of Han Solo, but there could be a host of opportunities for that role. I'm I'm all over this. I think this is great. Not auditioning. I, I cannot do a voice of that magnitude, but that is going to be fun. And did, they don't have a release date set just yet, but this is the first Star Wars thing that you can see on television or or whatever, a video that my four-year-old son watched. And I have such wonderful memories of just watching the, the first few episodes of that with him. And then we're going to have more of them, and we're going to have uh, some of the more iconic characters on there, too, to add to the iconic characters we've already had in this series. I, I think this is just tremendous. Eric, are you a big One fan of, of Forces of Destiny? I love the show, and my kids both really liked all of the episodes. I can't think of a moment that they weren't into. And my little girl is really into the toys. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see the next few episodes come. One of my favorite Leia moments comes in Forces of Destiny, the one where she's working with Wicket. Yeah. When she gets yeah. she gets the dress at the end, and she says, "Thanks for the dress. Does it come with a spear?" It's just such a Leia moment. Like, yeah, it's pretty, but I'm gonna need a weapon. I I love the Hoth one with where Chewie is essentially kidnapped and um is and the Wampa thinks that Chewie's a teddy bear. I thought that was really awesome too. Don't we all think Chewie's a teddy bear deep in our hearts? <laughs> <laughs> My girls are super excited. When I told my oldest daughter, she's 10, that um, that Han Solo and Finn were going to be in the show, she was so excited. And, you know, th- there's such in- instant gratification among, among children these days that she really thought that we were just going to watch that tonight. Because <laughs> I, showed, I showed all of them together to her. Well, I guess they weren't all together, but several of them at a time uh, because we just they, they kind of rolled out quickly there. And. Um, but yeah, they have, they have the, the action figurines and they, they love the show. Just, it's such a great addition to the star Wars story. And I've been really happy. You guys, I don't know how, how many other parents there are in the conversation, but Dan, how do you feel about how many strong female characters they've brought to the saga? Just, just since Disney took over, I mean, three of the five organic members of the ghost crew are all women. 
That's true. I, th- I think it's great. And, and I, one of the reasons I know that we're getting somewhere is that I don't even realize that the main characters are male or female. I just know that they're cool characters that I like. And I love that my son is growing up and all of these female characters are spotlighted and showcased. So for him, it is the norm. And I think that is brilliant. And I think it's refreshing. And especially when I go over mythology with my students, the amount of sexism in mythology, ancient Greek mythology especially, is just unbelievable. So it's really nice to get the, the pendulum swinging the other way. Well, we'll wrap up the news today with uh, a story from uh, Yahoo Movies. They have released their list of 50 movies they're most looking forward to this fall. And topping that list with no surprise to this reporter is Star Wars' latest episode, The Last Jedi. In the report, Yahoo has released several exclusive photos from many of the films, including one from Episode 8. The photo is of Rey standing on Acto, Acto, sorry, uh, excuse me, uh, facing the ocean with her back to the viewer. In the photo, she holds her staff across her back in one hand and her head is slightly down to the right, showing her famous trio of hair loops. Next to her is a large rock formation and in the distance across the ocean can be seen other outcroppings of the island chain. I have yet to get tired of many amazing scenes from the training grounds of Octo, but I, like many of you, I'm sure, am looking forward to the story unfolding from this beautiful, seemingly serene location. It's going to be, it's going to be lovely. And, and by the way, the official pronunciation is Ashto. Even though it's Ashto. not spelled that way, but that Lucas, well, I had uh, an itch Sauer in my nose. Kind of famous for ignoring the rules of, of phonics. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a, st- it's a, a wonderful shot. That shot we, we put on our website yesterday, as did every Star Wars fan site. And boy, was it popular. Obviously, we haven't seen a main trailer. And when I was going to my car today after school, I started thinking, I honestly would be okay if we didn't have a trailer. I don't really think we need one. I don't know that it's really going to make that much of a difference. Everybody who wants to see it is going to go see it. Now, obviously, they're going to have one. I'm sure it'll happen during Monday Night Football again or something to that degree, and I have no inside information to support that. But I'm sure it's going to happen, but I would be completely at peace if there was no trailer. What about all of you? I want to see a trailer just because I'm, you know, I can't get enough of the visuals. And it's more about the emotional chord it strikes with me than anything I actually learn about the story. But I I had the perfect amount of what I knew ahead of time that I felt going into The Force Awakens. And I really don't want to upset that balance. And whenever I was just, for example, reading uh, Anthony Bresnikan's articles in EW, I was yeah. like, ooh, ooh, it might be a little too much. But, you know. Brian, what about you? I agree with you. I think it'd be all right. Honestly, coming into – you can come into it a little bit too informed. And frankly, um, they know the fine tooth combs with which we go over the trailers. And so – there's a lot of information that was in the Rogue One trailer that wasn't in the movie. There's scenes that we don't see. There's lines that we don't see. Like that line when Luke says it's time for the Jedi to end has been debated endlessly on, you know, what it specifically means. I, I think, yeah, like I say, you can come in a little bit. You can, yeah. You, well, was it even Luke saying it? What's the context of him saying it? You know, there's just so many. There's actually you may know this, Dan, being more in the industry than I, but there's uh, awards that are given within the trailer the trailer making industry. And for example, one of the awards, one of the highest prestigious awards in that community is making a good trailer for a bad movie. And a lot of that is just, you know, how much, how much can you make people think one thing? I was a fan of Pacific Rim, but I like, I like Howard the Duck too. So I'm objectively wrong on this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Dark Tower is another one though. Like you, you look at the, you look at the trailer for a lot of, a lot of terrible movies and the trailer is better than the film. And they they know. I mean, as much social media as and as savvy as everyone in the Lucasfilm production team is, they know exactly what we're looking for and they know how to mislead us. Then there's I think there's a lot that goes in there. Well, so I'd be happy to see. I'm, I'm happy with the trailer we got. It's not like I'm not going to see the movie if we don't get a trailer. I'll be there midnight. Exactly. Same time, same channel, same place. Exactly. And I was always more blown away by the 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 poster for the Last Jedi than I was the last trailer, but. And they're both great. It's going to be an awesome movie. And tomorrow, Tom, you and I and uh, the co-founder of Coffee with Kenobi, Mr. Corey Club, are mm-hmm. going to be yes. out in full force. 
uh, finding all the new Star Wars goodness. I'm looking forward to that and uh, appreciate you coming back on, of course, and sharing the news with us. Absolutely. Well, we'll catch up with you tomorrow night then. Sounds perfect. So we will take a break, and when we come back, we're going to speak with Sophia Mini of Pozu about their incredible selection of Star Wars footwear and discuss the Force Friday 2 exclusives. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Coffee, tea, or me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's Coffee with Kenobi. Coffee with Kenobi was sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Thrawn and Empires in Aftermath to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Visit PenguinRandomHouseAudio.com slash Star Wars for sample clips and to start listening now. Coffee with Kenobi is also sponsored by the Star Wars digital card trader collecting app from Tops. If you love Star Wars and love the excitement of chasing your favorite Star Wars collectibles, the Star Wars digital card trader collecting app from Tops is for you. Download the free app from iTunes or Google Play. From the classic 1977 Star Wars cards to the Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, The Force Awakens, Rogue One, and much more. Collect and trade with friends new and old through the Star Wars digital card trader collecting app from Tops. These are the cards you're looking for. Safia Mini is here from Pozu. Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Hi, thank you so much, Dan. Oh, absolutely. It's great to have you here to have a cup of coffee with us. And you are part of an amazing line of Star Wars collectibles. These uh, Star Wars shoes and uh, footwear are just exquisite. Tell us a little bit about how you came into the Star Wars brand. Yeah, so it's um, it's uh, it's very interesting as a, a journey for um, for the brand and and for the founder Sven Segal. Um, so I think you know both um, Sven and I, um, I I'm the um, founder of, of People Tree, an ethical fashion company. I think both of us were really really passionate about creating something that was um, very very authentic. Um, that was built, you know, we're using uh, organic and sustainable materials and produced in, in the way that really respects the worker, but something of, of very, very high aesthetic integrity. And when um, uh, Lucas Films came to us and said, you know, um, well, orig- uh, uh, at first, of course, we didn't know that it was for Star Wars, um, but um, I'll spend to design um, shoes. Um, you know, we were really, really excited, and um, and I think um, you know what we've what we've developed now with the Pose of Star Wars collaboration is the most fantastic um, lineup of of sneakers of high tops in organic cotton and. Um, uh, right the way through to chrome-free leather boots for men, women, and children. So it's been a it's been a really, really interesting and, and transformative um, journey for a, a small ethical company based in London. It's been fun. Oh well, I can't even imagine the um, what you felt when you realized Lucasfilm was reaching out to us. We're going to be making something Star Wars related. Yeah, I think this is um, it's it's really exciting, um, and you know the, the first time actually that um, you know um, the actual um, you know uh, footwear in in Star Wars. You know we have um, replicas that are that are so so um, authentic, but also you know produced to such a high standard in terms of. Um, design and ethics, and and I think that's that's why a lot of people have kind of recognised it, and you know really also appreciate the the the, um, the comfort of the footwear um, alongside um, the aesthetic. Absolutely, and and I know for me as a consumer, obviously I wear shoes. Everyone wears shoes, and the things I look for will be comfort uh, and price, and, and obviously the aesthetic quality. And and Pozu hits all of those things. Um, beautifully, obviously. Take us back to the beginning and how you came up with some of the designs for the footwear. Sure. Um, well, that would be um, Sven, really, as, as creative director and senior um, designer of the brand. Um, so I think, firstly, 
what he was looking looking at is, you know, for example, with um, the new um, Ray boot, it's it's made with you know fantastic woolen tweeds and cork. Um, you know, it's a really really high integrity product, um, and you know looks fantastic. Um, he's then built um, alongside uh, that product um, the footwear that's worn by Finn and Poe, um, uh, which you know again have you know such authenticity but they're also as well as being you know fantastic for cosplayers they're also very very adaptable for you know fashion and for streetwear um and then we've developed this line of um as i mentioned of organic cotton um the resistance high tops which um go across both men and women and children and then um you know we've got the wonderful um Millennium design, which is, I think, really, really strong and has been popular. You know, what the interesting thing is, Dan, that people are reaching out, women are also reaching out and saying, you know, I really love this men's boot, you know. So, again, it's kind of helping us to really understand, um, you know, what the community wants um, to see more of. So, it's been exciting working on future collections as well. We've just finished the um, the, the spring summer 18 um, collection, and, and again, you know, just kind of looking at, at, um, at what people want more of. Right, and and you have you have footwear for women, uh, men, and for children. Uh, what are some of the inherent challenges to des- to designing footwear for uh, for uh, different ages? Yes, that's an interesting question. I think. Um Firstly, because we're using um, biodegradable and sustainable and organic materials. So, um, for example, we've just launched the um, limited edition um, silver top, uh, the high res- the, the resistance high top, um, which is using Pinatex. Um, so, it, the Pinatex is a pineapple leaf fiber as an alternative to leather, um, because the vegan movement is growing very, very strongly, um, you know, globally, um, mixed with um, with linen and, and and a, a natural latex with the bespoke coir foot mattress, which which really really gives you know a lot of support to the foot. I think what we were doing is really looking at how we could um, design you know easier to wear for children. So we've got little zippers in there, um, really for men and women. You know the, the whole kind of. DNA of the brand um, alongside ethics was was comfort and this really gorgeous aesthetic, which you don't have to compromise on because it's it's ethical. You know we've we've really ticked the boxes on that three and um, those three. Um, but with this wonderful collaboration, it really allows us to bring you know ethical footwear and sustainability into the the mainstream. And we've had the most amazing support through the Star Wars community. It's been really really amazing. Well, absolutely it is, and, and I have the, the collection pulled up on my um, computer, and I will have a link to this in the show notes for everyone to look at and to be able to purchase. And, wow. you know, you've got the, the resistance high tops. You, you mentioned the, the silver one, the limited edition that's coming out for Force Friday, which you and I, you showed me before we had this conversation, and it's absolutely right. gorgeous. I mean, I can't imagine uh, a Star Wars fan who not will not want to wear these things. They're beautiful. And then, as you mentioned... <laughs> You've got things that are fashionable and wearable, uh, but they're also accessible for cosplayers to to accentuate and add to their costumes, which is a great thing. I remember at Celebration uh, this year, you had you had a booth, and I we got to see some of the shoes firsthand. And I'll be getting my own pair very very soon, which I'm extremely excited about. Uh, people have asked me which is your favorite, and I said yes because they're all my favorite. They look <laughs> exquisite. I mean, the Finn men's boot is something that I could wear to a convention. I could wear it to Force Friday. I could wear it to church. I could wear it out on a date with my lovely wife. It, it really does cover all the bases. That, that's really great to hear. Well, I, I can't wait to see a picture of you wearing wearing yours. Um, all is, is, is quite a is is quite a lovely, flattering um, thing. We're, we're delighted, um, and I think you know, there's we're really hoping that we can um, you know we can bring a kind of a global um, street and Star Wars community thing, um, a kind of a hybrid of you know new images um, that will show this collection and collaboration. Um, you know, shot in different parts of, you know, kind of everything from, you know, hip to the London to kind of different areas um, around the world. And I think this is this is quite interesting that this is a, you know, it's truly a, a global, you know, synergy um, and, you know, really looking at, you know, light forces over dark forces at a time when, you know, quite frankly, we've got, you know, huge um, discussions at the moment about, 
um, environmentalism and climate change um, and, and, and what we need to do in fact to kind of promote human rights in the slate in the supply chains of, of fashion companies oh certainly in, in uh, then we, we turn our attention to the women's line um, some of the designs are similar to what uh, for men or women which I think is wonderful uh, the women have besides the exclusive uh, silver high top for Force Friday there's an off-white women's which I think is really nice with the red uh, lo- logo there and then uh, yeah. the, uh, the back to the men's one I forgot to mention this but talk to me about the design of the of the Millennium Falcon boot Yes, the Millennium Falcon boots really um, has been enormously popular. So we're, we're running that in organic cotton, um, printed um, white on black, and then also um, black on on off white. And I think um, that's been that's been in- incredibly popular. Um, second, I think to the uh, the black resistance boot. Um, yeah, we were we were really excited. You know, it's. It's you know it's so iconic with Star Wars um, and and something that you know we we've not seen around and we just we absolutely loved it and I think it's been really popular here in London at Comic Con. Um, I know many of our friends within the Star Wars community have, have already got their pair. Oh, I, I can totally see that in the box that the uh, the pose whose shoes come in has got that nice sort of that hyperspace look to it with the Star Wars logo. And I also love on your website uh, the video showing how these, how these, how the footwear is created and how it's, how it is made. I think that's fascinating. Thank you. I think we were really passionate to bring the story of how the, the footwear is handcrafted and, and the, you know, the, the integrity of the materials that are used. Um, I, I think it's, you know, we've, we've, in this global village, it's, you know, we, we sometimes, uh, you know, we're close, but yet we're so far away from the maker of the products that we consume every day. Um, and, you know, this is a premium quality product. We hope that it will be, you know, worn and, and people will really enjoy um, the comfort of the product and the style of it. But, um, you know, we also have collectors that are, um, you know, really excited to, to line up the range as well. Yeah, we, we really wanted to tell the story, and I really hope it comes across with um, with the short films that we've made that are on the website. Well, I full it certainly does, and I fully plan on wearing mine to when I see the Last Jedi because they, it just seems to go perfectly, as you said, comfort and style. They look great. Uh, you get to show off your Star Wars, and I think there's always something to be said for Star Wars collectibles that you can wear, and and people can notice that they're Star Wars. Or they can also just notice that they're a nice quality item, and it's it's great that that Pozu checks off both of those boxes as well. Thank you so much, Dan. You bet, you bet. So before we let you go, I see your coffee's getting lower. Maybe you're having tea. Uh, I'm drinking my organic coffee. It's fair trade. It's terribly tasty, and just at the right time in London. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, can you give us any kind of a hint to what we can expect? Uh, from Force Friday and beyond from Pozu. Yeah, Dan, well, we have a really exciting event um, on Thursday. Um, it's going to be very late. Um, we're going to be inviting about 150, 200 guests to the Museum of Brands in London. Um, we'll have uh, a, a lot of um, journalists there, influencers, bloggers. Um, there'll be a, a number of, of cosplayers. Um, we even have... Um, some really really interesting boogie storm um they are they're the the stormtroopers that were on the x factor so they're going to be dancing for us we're going to have this fantastic event as a backdrop to um revealing um some new products which i'm afraid you're going to have to wait um until uh one minute past 12 on friday morning um to hear a lot more but um yeah there's um, a really really interesting boot called the ray high which we we know that uh fans out there um, are really waiting to hear more about. Wow. Well, it will most definitely be worth the wait. Uh, Sophia, Mina, thank you so much for coming on Coffee with Kenobi and and CWK family members. If you're listening to this right now, uh, please be sure to go to their website through the show notes and see the wonderful collection of boots and shoes that Pozu has for Star Wars. It really is a wonderful thing to wear to show your and celebrate your Star Wars fandom, uh, take your significant other out in the town, or just have a comfortable time walking around amongst your normal day. Thank you so much, Dan. My pleasure. 
listening to Coffee with Kenobi. You are the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> Before we get to email, I want to thank our CWK sponsors, Penguin Random House Audio and the Star Wars Digital Card Trader Collecting App from Tops. Please support them the way they support our podcast. And remember to listen to new and archived shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Player FM, our website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com, or wherever you enjoy listening to your favorite shows. And if you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and we'd love for you to check us out there. Be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows, too, including Legends Library, Rebels Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. We have an email here from Grace Kylie who wrote, Hello, guys. I really enjoy your podcast, and I should have emailed a long time ago. Your knowledge and analysis of the Star Wars universe has had me looking at Star Wars in a whole new way. I was wondering, can you talk about the theory that Anakin mind-tricked Padme into falling in love with him? I love the prequels and Anakin, uh, and this theory has been bothering me ever since I found out about it. I don't really believe it, but I just want to know what you think about this theory. Thanks, and may the Force be with you. And she writes, P.S. Danzy, I agree with you when you said you will defend the prequels until the day you die. I will do the same. Well, Grace, thank you so much for emailing. As far as did Anakin mind trick Padme, I don't believe that for a second. I think that they were both very young and had no, you know, they had not dated anyone. So this was their first loves, and there's a bit of naivete that goes along with that most of the time. And I. I just don't think that he did that. I don't. I mean, he, could he have done that? I don't know. But I just, I don't buy that. I just think that they just made some bad choices, and they're just classic doomed lovers. What about you guys? Whatever he does, at, to the to the fullest extent. And I think that that's always been one of the purest parts of Anakin Skywalker is his love, his love for his mother, his love for Padme, and later on, his, you know, even if briefly, his love for his son. And it's that love that cost him pretty much everything in his life. It was his love for Padme that led him to, uh, that allowed him to be led into the Sith. And then his love for his son that led him back. So he fell from the Jedi for love. He fell from the Sith for love. He gave his life for love. I don't think at any point did he do it. That's uh, mind tricking someone to love you is an evil act. And I think at that point, uh, Anakin was Anakin had to be led to be evil. He wasn't born evil. Good point. And also, obviously, love is choice. So if he tricked Padme into loving him, then that would be love anyway. A reasonable facsimile thereof could be arguably sufficient, but I agree with you. Good point. I think you guys both hit it right on the head that if Anakin were to have done something like that, it was without intent. You know, if he somehow did use his, I think (laughs) that Hayden Christensen, I mean, come on, he's just a handsome dude. So I'm sure that it was just all natural. That's right. That is a yes. Yes, sir. You. Are, that is exactly right. <laughs> Even with a rat tail. <laughs> That's right. Hey, he can pull it off. A big thank you to Brian Karasik and Eric Struthers for having some coffee with me. Where can listeners get in touch with each of you if they want to ask you a question or just say hello? And Brian, we'll start with you. Again, thanks for having me, Dan. I can be reached at brian at channelstarwars.com. That's B-R-I-A-N at channelstarwars.com. I'm our senior presenter and one of our podcast co-hosts, and I'm always glad to hear from fans, and I hope that some of you guys will give us a listen on the Star Wars Hour podcast over on Channel Star Wars. And Eric, what about you? I'm most active on Twitter. You Check me out at Eric Strothers. It's E-R-I-C-S-T-R-O-T-H-E-R-S. Or check out my podcast, The Bad Motivators. It's available on iTunes and Google Play and anywhere else you might find a podcast. Absolutely. Both both are excellent shows. Uh, big fans of both of your work as well as both of you. Thank you so much for coming back on. And thank you to each and every one of you for listening to and supporting Coffee with Kenobi and for contributing to Star Wars Conversation. We will be back next week with two new co-hosts and more Star Wars talk. This is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. 
No one here. <laughs>